Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 8th of March. As always, I have the pretty quick uh, list of updates this week, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. So I dived into sudo for Windows. A super user do, I'm in a shell and I want to run something elevated. Well, now we have sudo capability for Windows to make it uh, really seamless. And then I explored conditional access for authentication flows. Specifically today, I think the device code flow and authentication transfer. So ways I can lock those down because they can be used for phishing attacks against our users. So I dived into what we can do. On to new updates this week. So there were new AMD V6 SKUs available in preview. So this is like the DA, SV6, the EA and the FA. These are the fourth generation AMD Epic CPUs. So remember that the DA SKUs, that's that general balance of CPU and memory, typically that one to four ratio, but there is also a one to two ratio. Um, EA is the memory centric, so a one to eight ratio of CPU to memory. And then the FA is CPU centric. Now they're also one to two or one to four, but the FA has the simultaneous multi-threading SMT disabled, which means it's just each virtual CPU is a full core, while the DA and EA, they use that uh, multi-threading, so one core can look like two virtual CPUs. They also have Azure Boost. They have the NVMe interfaces for both local and remote disks. So you should see pretty huge remote storage performance improvements. I think it's like 80%, 400% faster local speeds um, and improvements on network bandwidth. Azure Functions now has Node.js 20 support in GA. So that's for both Linux and Windows. And then Azure App Service now has backup over VNet. So if I'm using an app service that has been integrated with a virtual network, or I'm using the app service environment, which is just deployed into a virtual network, well, those can now have a custom backup where I have my files, my configurations, go to a firewall protected storage account. All I have to do in the storage account is allow that particular subnet to be allowed to talk to it, i.e. service endpoints uh, to the rescue. And then once I've saved that configuration, any manual or scheduled or restore job will be made uh, through that virtual network integration. On the storage side, so Azure NetApp Files now has a same volume mount cross AZ capability in preview. So what that really means is that I can have the same volume mount path to different volumes provided they are in the same region, but in different availability zones. So if I think about a highly available architecture for my application, well now I can use the same mount path to go to the instance in AZ1 and the instance in AZ2 and the instance in AZ3. So if there was a problem in one AZ, it simplifies that failover um, set of steps within my application. So that common mount path will be really useful to remove effort to go and change and update those things. You don't have to be using the cross zone replication. So it will work with that, but they could also just uh, be independent. They don't have to be participating in replication for this to work. And then on the miscellaneous side, so well-architected framework assessments are now in Azure Advisor. So if we quickly just jump over, so Azure Advisor, remember, is fantastic. We should be checking this periodically. It has recommendations across all of the pillars of the well-architected framework. But now you'll also see this little assessments area. And it makes it easy today to trigger two different assessments. So I can trigger, let me just select my sub, either the regular Azure well-architected review or the mission critical well-architected review. And so what this then enables me to do is to help complete this review and then track um, whatever I'm doing around there. So hey, that integration is going to be super useful. And then also, the Entra API-driven provisioning has gone GA. 
So I did a video on this a while ago, so check that out if you want the details. But before there were connectors for specific solutions, for example, Workday, what this lets me do is if I'm not using something that has a specific connector, well, anything, it opens up that provisioning endpoint. So as long as I can post a skim payload, well now to that endpoint, I can create, update, delete users, so it just makes it far more accessible to different technologies. And told you it was quick. That's it for this week. As always, I hope that's useful. Till next video, take care.